Despite its gleaming gold cartridge, Zelda 2 is often looked upon as the black sheep of the franchise, excluding abominations like the Wand of Gamelon. I think it's mostly just misunderstood. Nintendo is rarely a company that makes safe sequels, and they shocked fans when they totally reinvented the game. Instead of being focused on exploration like the more popular entries in the series, Zelda 2 is an action platformer first, exploration game second. If you enjoy games like Gargoyles Quest 2, or Strider, or even more recent titles like The Messenger, or Shovel Knight, then Zelda 2 is absolutely worth your time. When Zelda 2 released in the US in December of 1988, the Zelda franchise couldn't have been more popular. The cartoon series played every Friday after school, and we ate keys and heart containers for breakfast. Stores couldn't keep the game in stock, and it would ultimately sell 4.38 million copies, making it the 8th best-selling NES game of all time. Japanese magazine Famitsu gave it a 36 out of 40, their second highest rating ever at the time. The legacy of Zelda 2 is a bit muddier. For many players, the experience leveling system was confusing, the combat was tough, important items were hidden on random spaces in the overworld, and if that wasn't enough, there is a huge difficulty spike early in the game when the player has to traverse the Caverns of Death Mountain. Because of this, Zelda 2 often appears on lists of the most difficult NES games ever made. Well, excuse me, princess. What if I told you there were ways to manipulate the leveling system so that we won't have to spend hours grinding for experience? What if I told you there were tons of hidden heart containers, magic upgrades, treasure bags, and one-ups hidden in the overworld for you to find? And what if I told you there was a secret backdoor way to retrieve the hammer from Death Mountain without going through that ridiculous maze of caves? On today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we are doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please subscribe for more videos and click on the bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. Let's get started. We'll start here with a brand new link, and we always begin at the North Castle, so if you run out of lives, this is where you'll come back to. Stay on this road. If you veer off the yellow path, enemies will attack us, and we are very weak at the beginning of the game, so we just want to follow it to the small forest. In here, we'll be able to find the game's first treasure bag, and that will give us the opportunity to either level up life or cancel. I'm going to choose to take life level 2 here, but I think this is worth explaining in a bit more detail. So we could choose cancel, but why would we do that? We got the 50 experience points, why wouldn't we just want to level up? Well, if we choose cancel, we don't lose the points, we just bank them for now. And when we get to 100, we'll have the option to level up magic or life. If we cancel again, when we get to 200, we'll have the option to level up attack, magic, or life, and we'll have to pick one of them at this point. So we have the freedom to level up our stats in any order that we wish. The only risk is that if we lose all of our lives, we'll also lose any unspent experience points we've collected. So if you're close to death, you probably shouldn't choose cancel. Each stat has a maximum of 8 levels, and they all benefit Link in different ways. Leveling up life is essentially like gaining armor. Link will take less damage when he gets hit, and you also gain a full health refill whenever you level up, so gaining a level of life can be a godsend in some bad situations. Attack raises the amount of damage Link does, and is the stat that will cost the most experience points to level up. It's also the stat that is the most desirable of all, so you'll want to try to gain attack levels early. You'll really start to notice the difference when you reach attack level 4, so getting there is a big priority in the early game. Magic is the most confusing stat. Sure, you get a full magic meter refill whenever you level up, but the more important thing it does is it reduces the amount of magic points needed to cast spells. 
Each magic container you have is worth 16 magic points. So right now it requires two full blocks to cast the game's first spell, Shield. If we add magic level 4, it would only require one block. Magic will become very valuable once we gain the Life spell, but we won't be using it very much in the early game. For now, when we have the chance to level up magic, we're going to choose Cancel. Experience is usually gained by defeating enemies or finding treasure bags, but there is a third way of gaining points. When you finish one of the game's six palaces and place the stone in the statue at the end, you'll gain enough experience points to reach the next level. If you've been skipping levels, it's certainly possible to gain multiple levels of magic and life in one statue. We'll definitely want to max all of our levels to 8 before heading to the final palace, but the last six levels require a ton of points. Attack level 6 costs 3,000, magic level 7 costs 3,500, life 8 is 4,000, attack 7 is 5,000, magic 8 is 6,000, and attack level 8 costs a whopping 8,000 points. Even the game's most difficult enemies are only worth 200 points, so gaining these last levels is going to take forever. But what if we just wait to finish the palaces? As long as we find each palace's item, we will be able to proceed farther into the game. Once we reach attack level 5, life level 7, and magic level 6, we can go back to the palaces and finally complete them. By using this strategy, we will save ourselves almost 30,000 experience points. So for the purposes of this video, we won't be completing the palaces until later. Now that we understand the experience system, we're going to head to our first town, Raru Town. Every town has a healer that will refill your life, an old woman that will refill your magic power, and a wise man that will teach you a new spell. In this town, we're going to look for this long gray building, and we're going to talk to the woman with the fancy purple hat. She'll invite us into her house to speak with her father, and we're going to learn our first spell, Shield. Shield is a very good spell to use, it doesn't cost very many magic points, and it's extremely effective. It halves the amount of damage that we take when we're damaged, so this is going to be something that we will use very frequently not only on bosses, but on the more dangerous regular enemies as well. Once you have the shield magic, head out of Raru Town and follow the path north, then cut to the right across the forest, and head into this small cave. Every cave in the game is going to be dark like this until we get the candle from the first palace, so watch out for this loader enemy. He's nearly invisible in the blackness. We don't need the candle to finish the game, but it certainly is going to make it a lot less difficult. Before we go to the palace, we'll want to head south and pick up the game's first heart container. The heart containers are not mandatory to finish the game either, but they're certainly going to make it a lot easier. Watch out for these bubble enemies as you jump from platform to platform. They don't deal you a lot of damage, but they can knock you back, and if you land in the water, that's an instant death hazard, and you'll lose a life. When you get to the end of the path, the enemies will try to attack you, but if you lure them back on the path, you won't have to do a fight scene. Head down into the bare spot, and you'll find this Stonehenge type area, where we'll get that first heart container. Afterwards, you can kill this Goria for some experience points, and then we're going to head north, where we'll find the game's first palace. Parappa Palace is the easiest palace in the game. Exploring the palaces is the most Zelda part of Zelda 2, so I'm not going to show you exactly how to get through the palaces, but if you need a map, I will leave a link to one in the description. Attack these Wosu enemies. They will make you lose experience points if they hit you, so you definitely do not want to get hit by them. Over here on the left is going to be the game's first key. Keys are very important in this palace, but they won't be very important in the later ones, so if you have extra keys after you get the candle here, that's a good thing. You can kill this Stafos enemy by attacking him in the legs. Go over here and attack the key to claim it. Now the room that we're looking for looks like this. This is Parappa Palace's treasure room. Use your shield magic because first we'll have to fight this Guma enemy, and then we're going to have to fight the game's first iron knuckle. 
will definitely have to know how to fight Iron Knuckles in this game, and the most effective way to fight them is to jump and attack their face while you're in midair. Do not attack them while you're standing on the ground. Most of your attacks will go right into their shield, so jump attacks are the way to go against the Iron Knuckle. Once you get in here and grab the candle, that's the last thing that we actually need to do in this palace. If you are wandering around the palace and you find the room with the curtains in the ceiling, that's the boss's room. You could turn back, but it's okay to fight this boss, he's fairly easy. His name is Horsehead, and his body is armored, so you'll want to jump and attack him in the face. Just remember that we're not going to put the stone in the statue at the end, so if you already have your candle, and you're not worried about losing your experience points, we could do a quick save here. The quick save is done by pausing the game and then pressing up and A on controller 2. That'll take us right to the save screen. And then we'll go back to the north castle and we'll want to head south where we can find this cavern. Inside, we're going to find the game's first magic container. You'll notice that the cave is now bright and sunny. And that's because we have the candle from Parappa Palace. Fight these Octa Rocks by kneeling down so you'll block their rocks with your shield. And once we collect this magic container, head on back out of the cave. The next place that we need to go is north of the North Castle. So head on back to the path and follow it up. And we're going to cut across what's known as the Tantari Desert. Across the Tantari Desert we'll find a small cave. Inside the cave, we'll have to fight these bat enemies, which are known as Aches, and there will also be some Octoroks. Make sure to stay out of the lava, that's an instant death hazard, so be very careful that you don't get knocked back by a flying rock. I'm still choosing to cancel magic at this point, so we'll cancel that. And over here, we'll fight another Goria. This is the red variety. You can block his boomerangs with your shield, but once you grab this trophy, we're going to head on back out of the cavern, go down, meet up with the path, and we're going to find our way to the game's second town, which is known as Ruto Town. We'll soon find out why we got that trophy. We're looking for this building. Now, this woman is not actually the town healer. She was looking for that trophy, and now that she found it, She's going to invite us in, and we'll be able to visit with her father, who is the town's wise man. From him, we're going to learn the jump spell. Jump actually costs a decent amount of magic points, but it's going to make us jump much higher. The jump magic will be required for several platforming scenarios, but none of them are more obvious than the cave directly south of here. This cave will take us to West Hyrule Part B, and once you go into the small black square, You'll clear a couple rooms, and you'll emerge in this one, where you'll have to fight some Ake enemies. And also an Ake man, which could be easily taken out. We'll reach this large barrier. This is where we need the jump magic. Equip it and press select, and just jump on over. And we will emerge in a new part of the Hyrule overworld. Over here in this forest, we'll find the game's first fairy fountain. Jump from the stump and grab the fairy if you need a health refill. Make sure to stay out of the swamp areas. The grassland enemies are not very vicious, but the ones in the swamp will tear you apart. The challenge with this swamp terrain is that it slows down our movement physics and makes it more difficult to jump. The Octoroks are easily defeated, but in the Ganon Shadow version of this, you have to face bird enemies called Movies, and they can steal your experience points. Pick up the path over here, and we're going to need to make a very precise series of movements. So we're going to go five spaces right, three spaces up, and one space left. If you did it exactly correct, you'll arrive here at Bogu's house. If you messed it up though, you'll almost definitely be ambushed by monsters, so be ready to fight. We'll need this note to cross into Death Mountain, and now we have everything that we need to go to Saria Town. Head back out the same way you came and go down here to cross the bridge. These bony fish enemies are called Bago Bagos. You'll want to defend the rocks they shoot with your shield, but make sure to attack the fish when it gets close or it could steal your experience points. Just like that. Speaking of experience points over here in this small forest, 
we can grab a treasure bag worth 100 of them. Headed back over to the left, we should pick up the path again as soon as possible so we don't encounter any enemies, and we'll head down into Saria Town. Saria Town is going to be a very important stop on our path because this is where we get the life magic. If we head on over here to the left, we will find a woman that is missing a mirror. Just like many of the other spells in the game, like the jump magic before, we need a key item so that we can get the spell. Unlike the trophy, however, the mirror isn't hidden out in some cave in the overworld. Nope, it's right here in a small building just over to the left of where the woman was. You'd think that maybe she could have found that herself? It doesn't take a great hero to return a woman's mirror, so we'll head over here and we'll be able to go inside and get the life magic. Unlike in other Legend of Zelda games, none of the enemies in this game will ever drop hearts, so we will be highly reliant on the life magic to recover our health. Unfortunately, it requires 70 magic points right now, which is almost all the magic we have. We'll probably want to level up magic a little bit, and we'll want to make sure to use the shield magic because it's much more efficient. Heading over to the edge of town, we'll meet up with the river man. This is where we need to use that letter from Bagu. It works automatically as long as we have it, and now we're going to be able to cross over the river and into Death Mountain. Death Mountain is the most challenging part of the entire game, so if you've lost any lives doing these chores up till this point, you should do a quick save. Head to the first cave on the right. This very first cave just has moblins and bots in it, so it's going to be quite easy. But the caves are going to get difficult quickly. It's recommended right now that you have attack level 4 and life level 3 or higher. If you don't have life level 3 or attack level 4 yet, hopefully we'll get them as we proceed here. In this cave we'll fight a couple more bots and some aches. About every six enemies that you kill will have the potential to leave a magic refill, so you may want to pay attention to when that's about happening. Don't take that elevator up, it's not going anywhere good, and attack this Daira and its legs. We still only have attack level 3, but as soon as we get attack level 4, those Dairas are going to get easier. Take the cave to the right here, and follow this path. In this cave, we'll have an opportunity to refill our magic, but you need to have the jump spell. If you don't have the jump spell, you won't be able to grab that magic, and you'll fight this red Daira. The red Daira throws his axes, so you want to wait until the axe is behind its head and it's about to throw to jump to avoid it, and then get your attacks in. Those are probably the most difficult enemy that you'll fight here in Death Mountain. Follow the caves. Now when we get to this cave, we're going to have to fight some orange Dairas, so we may want to use our shield magic. We will have the high ground here though, so we'll want to time it to attack right after the Daira attacks. About four hits should take them out at this point. Looks like we've got a treasure bag, and this is going to give us attack level four. Now, watch how much more effective we are now. We should be able to defeat the Dairas with one less hit, making them much, much easier. One, two, three. Very simple now. Oh, and we can grab some magic. Very good. That'll help us cast our life magic more efficiently. Well, it will once we reach magic level three. Come down here through this cave. Now, at the end of this cave, there's going to be a red magic bottle, and we'll have the chance to refill all of our magic points. So if we can just make it through this one, we'll have full magic power for the last cave where we need to go to get the hammer. Take out these Dairas, and it looks like I can grab another level of life. So now I'm at the recommended attack 4 and life 3, so we should be in good shape. And here's that magic refill that I mentioned. Give it a grab, and we're going to head over across the beach into this cave. This is probably the most difficult cave here in Death Mountain, so we'll want to equip our shield magic whenever possible. Wait until the Daira has the axe behind his head to jump, and attack it whenever you can. These loaders are going to be very easy now that we have attack level 4, as well as the Aikmans, which we should be able to defeat in just two hits. 
A nice magic there should give us enough to cast life now if we need it. These cat enemies are called Magmats. They should be very simple. And three attacks to the leg will take out this Dyra. Head down on the elevator. You don't want to stay up there, that's a dead end. A red Dyra awaits us here. Carefully wait for it to attack before you jump. And take it out. One more hit. Oh, we get a full magic refill here. If we smash the select button with the life spell on while the magic is refilling, we can actually use our life magic for fewer magic points, so that's a pretty good trick if you didn't know about that. Watch out for this Mayu enemy here. You want it to just walk off the edge into the lava. We can't actually kill that guy right now without the down thrust ability. Head on over here to the right, and this is the last segment of the cave. Equip your shield magic, because we'll have to fight a couple more Dyras here. The red Dyra is ahead. If you have the jump spell available, you might want to cast that and try to jump over him. But we will need to get out of this cave after we grab the hammer. Magic upgrade, very nice. We'll grab the hammer. And like I said, don't do a quick save yet. Head out of that cave. Destroy this block by pressing the A button now that we have the hammer and we'll be able to get a mandatory magic container upgrade. And that's it, we can pause and do a quick save. You've beaten Death Mountain. Well, maybe you didn't. So I said at the beginning of the video that there was an easier way to beat Death Mountain, and I'm going to show you that now. I've started a new file where all I've really done is gone and grabbed the candle from the first palace, and we're going to head back down here to Raru Town. We're going to go and visit the healer here in Raru, and we need to speak with her on two very specific spots. So position Link in front of the door, talk to her there in front of the window, talk to her again in front of the door, and she'll start walking into the sky if you did it correctly. Press up on the controller and you'll be sent here, which I'll call Teleport Town. All we want to do in Teleport Town is to run to the right side and exit and we will have appeared out here at King's Tomb. Now, how did I do that? Hold on, I'll show you again, but this time in slow motion. So position Link in front of the door, and right as her face touches the side of that window, press the button to talk to her. She'll turn around, now pay attention to where her dress is at the bottom in relationship to those bricks. This needs to be pixel perfect, so that's position one, and this is position two. If you talk to her in those two specific spots, she'll start walking up into the sky, and that's how you'll know that you performed the trick properly. If you did it incorrectly, she'll enter the building as normal, and you'll just have to wait for her to come back out so that you can attempt it again. Don't talk to anybody here in Teleport Town or enter any buildings. I don't know what will happen if you do, but you'll come out here. We want to head to the left, and across this bridge, there are some Dyra enemies here that we'll have to deal with in addition to the bubbles, so I definitely recommend using the shield magic. One red Dyra. Remember that we attack him whenever he puts the axe behind his head. So behind the head, jump attack. Head across the bridge. And one more bridge segment over here. And this is something that you can do also if you grabbed the hammer in Death Mountain but you missed that magic container. This is a much faster way to get back to where you need to be. So head through this cave, and we will go down. And this is the back side of Death Mountain. Down here we'll have a little cave which will take us over to the beach. Be very careful in here, we have some lava which is of course an instant death hazard. Take out the Octorox. All in all, this is a very simple cave. And like I said, I started a new file here, so I don't actually have the life magic right now, or more magic containers. If you were doing this, much easier. Grab the hammer, and that's it. That's the Death Mountain skip. Now back to our regular walkthrough. All right, now that we have the hammer, 
we can do a quick save and head back to the North Castle. We have some things that we need to get now that we have that hammer. The first thing that we're going to grab is going to be down here, south of Raru. Now that we have the hammer, we can easily access this section of the game. We don't have to go through that cave where we use the jump magic anymore. Clear the rock, and at the end of this cave, we're going to find a heart container. There will be some easy monsters that you have to defeat in here. Don't worry about them. And we're going to come back out, head back to the path, over here to the left and up. Watch out for the enemies in the swamp. Looks like I got the Ganon Shadow with the Mobies. And we're going to destroy this rock, head into this cave. There are some Dyras in here, so take them out by attacking them in the legs. And at the end of this segment, we're going to find the Water of Life. The Water of Life sounds like it would be a very useful item. As in other Zelda games, it can be used to refill your health. But that's not what it does here in Zelda 2. Nope. The Water of Life is simply another key item that we need to get, and we're going to exchange it in the next town for a new spell. Once you have the Water of Life, I would do a quick save and head back to the North Castle. Follow the path, head back down through the rock, and we're going to crush this rock and access a new section of the map that we were unable to hit before. This is Mido Town. Mido Town is going to be a very important stop for us, as not only will we get a very powerful new spell here, but we're also going to get a new attack ability. We'll get that attack ability first, use the jump magic, and we're going to leap to this higher platform on the church. Go inside this obvious door, and down here we're going to find the Town Knight. The Town Knight will give us the ability to use the down thrust attack, all we have to do is press down while in midair, and we'll point our sword downward. This is going to be a very effective way to deal with the enemies moving forward. Just like that. Jump in the air and press down. The other thing we need to do here in Mido Town is get the Fairy Magic. Fairy Magic doesn't seem like a very powerful spell at first glance, but it's actually the most broken spell in the game. Talk to this old woman in the purple outfit. Hopefully the village wise man here isn't her father, or else he's probably like 200 years old. The fairy magic seems like something that you would only need to use whenever you want to cross a long chasm, or maybe fly over a high wall, but it's actually very effective for avoiding confrontations with the game's most difficult enemies. For that purpose, we'll actually be using the fairy magic quite frequently on this run. Head back onto the path and through the rock, and we are going to go and attempt the game's second palace. This palace is surrounded by swampland, so you'll want to try to get to the path areas within the swamp to avoid the enemies. There's also a magic refill right here, if you need it. The basic strategy here is to try to avoid the enemies as best you can so you don't have to fight them in the swamp. And the best way to do that is to try to bait an enemy and then walk it back to the path. So basically, you see the enemies and then head over to the path. Let the enemy hit you while you're on the path, and then you can move to the next path segment. Over here you do the same thing. And we should be able to get to Midoro Palace without taking a ton of damage. Now, if you attack this statue, oftentimes it will turn into a red magic potion. And we can use this opportunity to fill up our life and then have full magic as well. But be careful because sometimes it turns into a red iron knuckle instead. The only thing that we need to do here in Midoro Palace is find the handy glove. And we're looking for this room. If the room gets too filled up with blocks, you want to head back to the right, which will reset the room. But you need to move through there quickly. And now we're in the treasure room, and you can see what we can do with the fairy magic. Watch this. We're just going to fly over that red iron knuckle, and I don't even have a key, but I can fly through the door. And then I can pick up the glove. The fairy can actually even operate elevators. The only thing you really can't do with the fairy magic is pick up things like keys. I'm going to do a quick save here because the only thing we needed to do in Midoro Palace was get that handy glove. We'll head back down through the rocks, 
and we're going to be heading to the game's third palace. This one is the Island Palace. Before we go to Island Palace, I want to head down to this small beach. If we step on the right spot, we'll find another hidden one-up. That one-up should come in handy when we go into the Island Palace. So I'm going to head back up into the path and cut across the graveyard to King's Tomb. The enemies in the graveyard are quite difficult, so you'd really like to avoid them. And if you had spoken to some of the villagers in Mido Town, they would have told you that the hidden passage to the Island Palace is south of King's Tomb, so we're just going to walk straight down from here. You can use your down thrust to take out these loaders, and then we'll need to use our fairy magic to fly over this wall. We'll only need to endure one more room in this cave before we emerge onto the island that the Island Palace is named for. Avoid the enemies on the beach and head into the palace. We'll try to get our magic bottle by attacking this statue. This time we had to fight the Iron Knuckle. Now you'll notice that your down thrust ability is not very effective for damaging Iron Knuckles, but you can use it to position yourself against them. Continue to use your jump and attack the face method when fighting the Iron Knuckles. In this palace, we'll find that our down thrust ability will be a lot more useful, especially against these axe throwing doom knockers. We can also use it against that Mayu, and we'll want to attack the legs of this armored Stothos, just like we attacked the Stothos earlier in the game. This guy never lowers his shield, so take him down on the legs, and he could be easily removed for a cool 70 points. The only thing that we need to do in this palace is find the raft. The raft, of course, is in the treasure room, so when we get to this room, we'll use our fairy magic so that we can avoid this blue iron knuckle, and even though I did have a key, the fairy magic doesn't stop me from using keys. We'll do a quick save once we have the raft. Now we can access the east side of Hyrule. Head down here through the rock, and right down here below Mido Town is where the raft is used to cross this lake. We'll be immediately thrust into a field with no path. Whenever we're in this field, we'll find these Tektite enemies. These guys can only be damaged with fire magic, which we don't have just yet. We can get that fire magic here, in Naburu Town. Now the fire magic is totally optional. We don't need it to finish the game, but it is the only way to defeat certain types of enemies. And it's very easy to get, so we might as well grab it just in case we want to use it for something. Here we'll encounter a woman who's thirsty. Yeah, I can tell you're thirsty just by looking at you. And we'll walk over here, so we can get the water right there. Now, she can easily see that fountain right from where she's standing, so I don't understand why she needs us to get the water for her, but... Uh, whatever. We're gonna go in here and meet the town's wise man, and we'll get that fire magic. Now, fire magic doesn't cost a lot of magic to use, and it lets us shoot fireballs from the end of our sword. I don't really use it very often, because I'm always trying to use my magic points for something else, like either shield spells, or fairy, or life. Uh, use fire magic as you will. Head north from Naboru Town into this cave. We'll fight some Aikmans here. Crossing this cave is going to take us to the next section of Hyrule, and that's where the Maze Palace is going to be. This enemy is called Azora, and it's one of the ones that we need fire to destroy. I usually just use Down Thrust to avoid him. And when we get out of the cave, we want to head to the right over to this beach and cross over this bridge to the maze. Luckily, they don't make us fight anything on that bridge, and we want to head down on the bottom of the maze, and up on the far right side, where we will fall into a pit, and find the hidden child. First, we'll have to fight one of these lizard posts. Lizard posts are a very good way to get experience points. They're worth 150, and we should approach them like we do the iron knuckles with jump attacks to the face. Here was the missing child. We'll need that in the next town to exchange for a magic spell. And the, before we do that, let's head down into the maze and follow the exact path that I'm showing you here. If you veer off this path, you'll end up having to fight some enemies. 
but if you walk into one of those zones, you can just back yourself out. If you follow the path correctly, you'll fall into a secret pit where you'll find your next magic container upgrade. Head back out the same way you came. We went across back over the bridge and go to the left side of this new section of Hyrule. The enemies here can be dangerous, especially the ones in this desert section. Soon you'll come to an area that you can't avoid, where you'll have to fight some Octoroks, and avoid these water pits, which are instant death hazards. Use your down thrust to defeat the Octoroks and block their boulders with your shield. You'll have to finish two of these sections before you emerge and can enter Darunia Town. Darunia is a town where we will get two new abilities. The first one is going to be a spell. We're going to cash in that kid that we found with this old lady in the purple. Yep, we're a hero for saving that child. Actually, it was one that they probably couldn't have done on their own this time. Head in here and this wise man will give us the reflect magic. The reflect magic will make our shield more powerful, and it's the only way that you can kill the wizard enemies in this game, one of which is a boss. So reflect is certainly mandatory, and the other ability that we'll get in this town, we'll need to use the jump spell to get. Jump onto this building, jump onto this next higher building, over onto this one, and then press down on top of this chimney, and you'll emerge in this room. This time we'll find the town knight, and he will give us the up thrust ability. The up thrust ability works just like the down thrust, you just press up instead of down. I find that the down thrust ability is a lot more useful than up thrust, but you will use up thrust to fight some of the flying enemies in the game, like the floating eyes, which are called moas. Once you have both the reflect magic and the up thrust ability, we're going to do a quick save and cut back across Hyrule. Before we go to the Maze Palace, let's grab this one up on the beach outside of the bridge, and then back across the bridge to the maze. Go the same way that we went before to get up to where the magic container upgrade was, and now just follow this path. We want to head up here, to the left, around this curve, we can't avoid the enemies here. We do have to face this section. We use your down thrust against the bots. There will be some Zoras here. Remember that we'll need to use fire to defeat the Zoras or the Tektites, but we can also just bounce over top of them by using our down thrust ability. Head out here. Now, if you need more magic points, there is a magic bottle in this section over here. But we don't really want to walk through this scene, so after you get your magic here, just turn around and head back the same way that you came. So heading back into the maze, follow this path to the left, and then all the way to the top, over to the right, down, right, down again, and we're just going to follow this to the right, and then it'll take us right to the palace. Here in the Maze Palace, we are looking for the Winged Boots. That's the only thing that we need to do here. We don't want to fight the boss. We don't want to put the stone in the statue. We don't have enough levels for that yet. So once we get in here, an important thing you need to know is that it's safe to fall into pits that don't have lava or water underneath them. Actually, falling through pits is going to be a very important part in this part of the palace, because that's the only way to get to the treasure room. And the treasure room looks like this. It's guarded by an armored Stothos and a blue iron knuckle. I recommend that we use our fairy magic as usual to avoid the iron knuckle. He's only worth 150 experience points and is very difficult. Once you get the boots, you can do a quick save and we can come back here to Naboru Town, and we will be able to walk on the water now. So that's what the winged boots do. If we head down here into this cave, this is a good time to maybe build up a level, because at the end of this cave, we're going to find a treasure bag worth 500 experience points. Use your fire magic to defeat the enemies in here, or just try to avoid them by bouncing over them with the down thrust ability. 
this enemy here that looks like a scorpion is called an Aruroda. He could be tricky to deal with, so I would just avoid, grab the 500 points, and let's head back over towards Naboru Town and take this path. Follow the water. You can't actually walk on all of the water, just some of it for whatever reason, but if we come over here and use our jump magic spell, we're going to find another treasure bag worth another 500 points. It's a good chance that that should be able to level you up at least once. Now that we've done our leveling up, the next thing that we need to do is head back into the water, where we will get the game's third heart container. This heart container is particularly difficult to find. It's up here above the palace, and the water here is kind of like the swamp, so we'll need to use our jump magic to be able to make it up onto this ledge. Use the jump spell and grab the heart container. And now we can head back into the water the way that we came. Come back down and round, and we will be able to enter the Palace on the Sea. The combat really intensifies here in the Palace on the Sea, so you'll certainly be happy to have that heart container. One thing that is notable about the enemies here is that they could be worth a lot of experience points. These old hags are called Magos, and they're worth 200 points. I'd attack them with the down thrust if you're going to fight them. You're looking for this room with the blue iron knuckle. At the end, it looks like a dead end, but the wall is fake. You want to head through this wall, and that's going to lead you towards the treasure room. Once again, this is the treasure room. You may want to kill some of these iron knuckles if you're trying to level up your character but we'll probably want to skip the blue iron knuckle as usual with the fairy magic. Once we get in here, we're going to grab the flute. Now, the flute has two purposes in the game. We're going to use it to remove the river devil, which will allow us to proceed on the overworld. And then we're also going to use it to find the sixth and last of the statue palaces. Do a quick save here and head to the area south of Naburu town. Press the B button to use the flute and clear out the River Devil, and you will enter this area here where you will have to avoid being pelted by a lizard foes. Just try to get to the other side as quickly as possible. You will need to clear three of these sections before you emerge in the area below. Avoid that graveyard. There are invisible enemies there, and that's the way to go to the end of the game. We're not ready for that yet. Instead, you want to stay on the path and then cut north up through the forest. Avoid the swamp as usual, it's extremely dangerous. And we're going to go over here through this cave to New Kasudo Town. This cave has a number of dangers in it, and while the orange lizard foes are worth 150 points and certainly worth our time to fight, the red ones actually seem to be more difficult to defeat, and they're only worth 100 points. So we're going to see a red lizard foes up here ahead, and we're just going to avoid him. Avoid the red ones, fight the orange ones, and head over here to New Kasudo Town. We're going to press A on this space to reveal the town. It's totally hidden, and if you didn't know that was there, good luck finding it. Now, this woman says that we deserve her help. The reason that she's saying that is because we already had seven of the magic containers. Now, if we didn't have all seven, she would not allow us in. And she also tells us that there's a secret at the edge of town. We'll see what that is very soon. Head through to the right and pick up the magic container. And the next thing that we need to do in here is go over to the right and get the Spell of Spell. The Spell of Spell is very easy to find. We just need to walk through this second open door. Head over to the right and press up in front of that chimney. Come down here to the town's wise man. He tells us to remember the magic word, and the spell of spell can be used to transform enemies into bots, making them easier to fight, but it costs 48 magic points right now, so we're not going to use it except here at the edge of town. So all the way to the right in town is this clear area. Use the spell of spell here and enter the door. This is where we're going to get the magic key, which will give us infinite keys. Head back to the main area before the cave, and up here in the swamp, 
we can find another cave where there is a hidden treasure bag worth 500 experience points. And those 500 experience points are going to come in handy because very soon we're going to be building up our levels and trying to get ourselves to attack level 5, magic level 6, and life level 7. You'll see that there are a hidden one up over in the swamp. And down here is another hidden treasure bag that you can find worth a whopping 500. Very nice. Now, directly south of this area, we'll find the final heart container. There it is. Grab that last heart container. And we want to head back over to New Kasudo Town. This is where we're going to do our powering up. So fight the enemies here. Remember that these orange lizard posts are worth 150. And each time you fight the black bot enemy on the overworld, there will be two of them in here. So try to keep them on the same side so that you don't get stuck between them. Use shield magic. Use life magic. Don't let yourself get killed and you'll get a nice 300 points each time you fight the enemies here, which that's going to gain our levels very quickly. The dealers are only worth about 5 points, but they can maybe give you a little bit of magic back sometimes. If you need to refill, just go back in the town, visit this old woman, and you can actually use your life magic while you're refilling. That's a very fast way to refill your health and your magic. Just stay close to town, and soon enough, we'll have Attack 5, Magic 6, and Life 7. And it's time to go attack those palaces. So do a quick save and head back to Parappa Desert, where we will go to the first palace. I've already detailed earlier in the video how to defeat the Horsehead boss. So if you've fought him already, he won't be here. Otherwise, he should be very easy to defeat with the stats we currently have. Head over here to the right and just walk in front of the statue to place the first crystal. We will gain our 3,000 points and be able to take attack level 6. The next palace that we're going to go to after this is Medoro, so just do a quick save after you gain the level and head over to the swamps in Medoro Palace. Now the Zelda boss rush can truly begin. This guy is called Helmet Head. Use your shield magic and you will want to jump and attack him in the face. It's not too different from fighting the Iron Knuckles in the game, except this guy can shoot at you, but he probably won't last long enough to do very much damage. Grab his key and head to the right, and we will reach the second statue. This time we're going to gain 3,500 points, which will be good for Magic Level 7. After we gain magic level 7, we'll do a quick save and head back to the Island Palace. Remember that the Island Palace is located south of King's Tomb. Go through the passageway and head up to the palace. The boss of this one is the Guardian Iron Knuckle. Make sure to use your shield magic so that you don't take too much damage. And we want to jump and do the down thrust right in the middle of the horse's head. So that's where you're trying to land. If he's kind of lingering on the sides, it's okay to get aggressive with this guy as long as you can see the horse's head. But usually you're trying to attack him when he's in the center of the room. No, he's definitely let me have him there. Now, once he's off the horse, you just want to attack him like a regular iron knuckle and you should be able to take him down fairly easily. Grab his key and head to the right, where we will hit the third statue. This time we're going to gain 4,000 points, and 4,000 points is going to be enough to get us life level 8. Life level 8 is the highest level of armor that we can receive, it's nice to have one of our stats finally fully maxed out. Do a quick save and head back to Maze Island. This time when we cross Maze Island, we can quickly and easily move to the palace by walking over the water with our winged boots. Head over into the inside, and this is going to be one of the easiest bosses on our route. Carlock. Use the reflect magic 
and you're going to want to crouch down on the right side of the screen and just kind of face to the left. Most of the time he won't do you a lot of damage here and you'll just keep reflecting the shots back at him. So just hang out in this spot and sooner or later enough of these reflected magic beams will take Karlock down. And that's it. Very, very simple. Once Carlock has finished exploding, grab his key and head to the right through the door where we will reach our next statue. We will place the gem, and this time we're going to get 5,000 points, which should get us attack level 7. Attack level 7 is going to make us very, very powerful. And so when we return to the Palace on the Sea, which is the next place that we need to go after a quick save, the Palace on the Sea is probably going to feel a lot easier this time. Just head straight over from the Buru Town. We'll cross the ocean and pop into the palace. The boss here is Guma. Now, Guma actually is a bit of a threat, so use your shield magic, stay away from him, and after he attacks, you just want to get in there, get low, and attack his feet. So, wait for him to attack, back off, feet, back off, feet. Very simple. He actually can do a decent amount of damage, even though we have pretty advanced stats. So, make sure you still use your shield magic here. You should make short work of Guma. We will be able to place our fifth statue stone and finally gain magic level 8. Two of our stats are maxed out now. After we get magic level 8, it's going to be time to do a quick save and head back to the area where we got the final heart container. That area has a strange rock formation called the Three-Eyed Rock, and if we play our flute right in the middle of the Three-Eyed Rock, it will make a palace appear. This is the last of the palaces where we have to put a stone and a statue, so not only will we get the game's final item here, but we will also max out our stats. Unfortunately, the Three-Eyed Rock Palace is going to be one of the most difficult ones we've played yet, but we should be able to handle it pretty well now that we have all these advanced levels. The thing that you really need to find in the Three-Eyed Rock Palace is behind this room. So there's one, two, three statues of Iron Knuckle, and then you need to use your jump magic. Head on out to about the second brick and do a big jump to the right, right there. If you don't do that, You'll fall into a pit, and you'll have to redo this room. They even put some blocks at the end that you have to break, so that you can't use your fairy magic to cheat your way through it. Three pillars, two bricks, jump spell, that's the way to do it. The Guardian Iron Knuckle is used as a mini-boss here. Just dispatch him the same way that you did before. Jump and try to do a down thrust in the middle of the horse's head. And once he's been removed from the horse, attack him as you would any other blue iron knuckle. The item that you'll get behind this guy is the cross. The cross is not an item that is mandatory for finishing the game, but it's going to be very difficult to get through the last areas without it. Do you remember earlier where I said there was a graveyard with invisible enemies in it? Well, the cross will make those invisible enemies visible. There is going to be a whole town full of invisible enemies, and a whole bunch of stuff in the Valley of Death, where if you bump into invisible enemies, you make it knocked back into a lava pit. The cross is going to be a useful item to have for sure. After you defeat the second Guardian Iron Knuckle, we're going to head over here to the right, where we will face the true boss of the Three-Eyed Rock Palace. But right before that, you'll have an opportunity to get an extra life if you use your jump magic here. Be very careful though, there's a blue iron knuckle guarding it, and if you use too much of your magic here, you won't be able to cast the fairy spell on the next screen. So you may have to let these magic bubbles take you out, 
just so that you can lose a life and get all your magic points back. As soon as you go over here and fall into this pit, make sure you're ready to cast the fairy spell. I always pause and make sure it's readied. Press select and fairy your way out over that pit and over to the right. This is going to take us to the boss of the level. The boss of the level is a lava dragon named Barba. Barba may be the most difficult boss in the game, just because he's located next to these lava pits, which are instant death hazards. You want to crouch down at the edge of this platform and just start attacking before he appears to get a quick hit. Once he drops down, he could appear from any of the lava pits. Whenever he appears to the left or the right of you, you want to get very close to the dragon, jump and attack him in the head. But when he's far away, you want to stay far from the dragon so that the fire doesn't hit you. Whenever he is nearby, I like to just kind of crouch down and stab and just hope I hit him sometimes. When he's far, stay far. When he's close, get close, jump and attack. And make sure to try to attack as he drops down as well. So those are the times to get him when he appears right before he does the fire, and right before he goes back into the lava. Just try to get him in the face. Eventually he will explode. Don't ever jump off of this platform while you're fighting him. You don't want to end up in the lava. Just take the hits, make sure your shield magic is on, and Barba should not be a big problem. We know that you can beat him here at You Can Beat Video Games head over here to the final statue, we'll place our last stone, get our 8,000 points, and finally we'll have attack level 8. Make sure that you don't do a quick save just yet. Right outside the palace, there is going to be a bridge, and we'll cross over that bridge to get to the last town in the game. You may remember that earlier we were in New Kasudo Town. Well, this is Old Kasudo Town. Watch out for the Bago Bago fish, and be very careful not to fall into the water here. If you were to run out of lives at this point, it's not that big of a deal. You can just continue and walk back here. Cross over this bridge, and head to the town of Old Kasudo. You see that flying Moa enemy? Well, you would not be able to see it if you didn't have the cross. Walk into the first open door that you see, and in the basement here we'll find an old man, and he will give us the thunder magic. Thunder magic seems awesome in theory. It does a ton of damage to enemies whenever you use it, but it also requires an absolutely ridiculous amount of magic points, and is the sole reason why we needed magic level 8. We will not be using a lot of thunder magic whenever we fight the garden variety enemies in the game, but it is essential for fighting one of the final bosses. Do a quick save and head back to the area below that graveyard, and this is the road to the Valley of Death. The enemies here are very dangerous with open pits that you need to avoid, and you will have to fight some mandatory scenes that look like this. Now, I like to use the fairy magic for these, just kind of push through the lizard foes, you won't be able to be knocked into lava pits if you're a fairy. You have a lot of magic points now, you can probably do several castings of the fairy magic, and that's the easiest way to get through the Valley of Death. It's actually quite straightforward, and when you get here, you can use the quick save, but don't choose save, make sure to choose continue. If you die or use a quick save on the final palace here, you actually will be able to continue at the final palace, which is a really nice way to replenish your lives. Get in here and head to the left. We'll fight this enemy, which people like to call the spicy chicken, but its proper name is a Fokiru. Try to avoid most of the enemies here. The great palace is like a giant maze, but if you follow my instructions, we'll get through it easily. If you see a room that looks like this, jump right after that pillar, otherwise you'll fall through an invisible hole in the floor. Take the elevator down and head to the right. You'll follow this path to the right and we will encounter our first Faka enemy. 
the Faka are these bird soldiers. They're sort of like iron knuckles, but they're even more tenacious. And they can jump, which is a huge difference. Just try to avoid this guy, use your down thrust to break these blocks, head over to the right and down the elevator. In these elevator sections, you can actually go through the wall. Inside the wall, if you use your jump magic, you can attack a Faka statue and possibly get a red magic refill. It could also turn into a red Faka and fight you. In that case, you should just run away, go back through the wall, and head down the elevator. It is very nice to be able to refill your magic here in the Great Palace, so make sure to take these opportunities whenever you can. Down here we want to head to the right again. You'll see another spicy chicken. If you bump him several times, he'll kind of fall off the stage. There he goes. Follow that path. When you get down to this room with the bots, you need to kind of get to a higher platform here because we're about to fight a blue Faka and blue Fakas are almost like a boss. You want to get to a position where you're about four or five blocks up off the ground and then just kneel down and start stabbing. The Faka will jump and he will get hit by your sword and your shield should take care of almost anything that he throws at you as well. Just keep doing this and make sure to clear this guy. If you don't kill the blue Faka here, as you head over to the right, you'll need to remove a bunch of these blocks. And if there's a blue bird shooting swords at you, you're certain to sustain a ton of damage. As you continue to the right, you'll encounter another blue Faka. This time though, the room is laid out the same as when we fought the red Faka, so we want to try to escape from this one. Watch out for this Daegu bubble. Use up thrust to defeat him as quickly as possible. Head over to the right and use the down thrust to break through these blocks. Jump into the elevator and head down. Over to the right we'll have an opportunity to refill our health with a fairy, but be very careful not to use your down thrust too much and go through the platform at the bottom and end up in the lava. Break the blocks out and head over to the left. We'll need to take the elevator downward to proceed, but if we want to get an extra life, we could do a bit of precise platforming here. Don't jump to any platforms that a bot is sitting on, wait for it to jump off, or just use the fairy magic if you're not confident in your platforming ability. Over here we'll grab that last one up, and then head back to the elevator and go downwards. We're going to head to the left here at the bottom of the elevator, and we are so close to the end we can taste it. Once we get past this spicy chicken, there will be some blocks on the ground that we can destroy. We will want to destroy the fifth block from the left, and underneath that block is going to be a hidden drop that will take us down to where the final bosses are. Watch out for these raws. Drop through. And we are going to head right here. Avoid this giant bot. It's not necessary to kill him. Continue to the right across this breaking platform. You'll notice that there will be a gap in the lava. That's where we want to drop to. So just drop right into that gap. If you have less than full magic, head to the left. If you break out these blocks, there should be some magic all the way over here to the left. Just keep breaking out the blocks and there will be a magic bottle right over here. You're going to need full magic points to fight the next boss, the Thunderbird. Once you have it, head over to the right. All right, we're going to equip a whole bunch of magic spells here. So put on shield, jump, reflect, and then get ready to cast thunder, but don't cast it until the boss appears on the screen. There he is, cast thunder. That will turn him blue, and now you just want to jump and attack the headdress. You're not trying to hit the face. You want to hit that headdress above the face. Now this guy does a lot of damage if he hits you, but that reflect magic will actually allow your shield to block a lot of his fireballs. We can get very aggressive with the Thunderbird here. If we do take hits, our shield magic will help out as well. And we have such a high level of attack that it won't take very many to get this guy. 
It's almost impossible to defeat this guy without using this cocktail of spells. Unfortunately, it leaves us with not enough magic to cast life. But if you just take care of this guy, you will essentially have beaten the game because the final boss is super easy. Head over to the right after you defeat the Thunderbird and you will meet with Shadow Link. Equip your shield magic, you should still have enough magic points for that. We'll see this old man with the Triforce. Suddenly Shadow Link will jump out of Link's body and you need to get to the left corner of the screen. Once you're in the left corner, just crouch down and whenever Shadow Link gets nearby, attack him in his legs. He might get you a couple times, but Shadow Link almost always falls for this stuff. If you try to fight him any other way, he'll block almost everything that you throw at him. Crouching down on the left side of the screen seems to be the only safe way to fight Shadow Link. It takes 8 hits, and he's dead. And that's the end of Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Well, I hope this video allows you to finally bring peace to Hyrule and become a true hero. If it did, make sure to give it a like and be sure to subscribe for more videos. Unlike the original, Zelda 2 doesn't really have a second quest but there are always going to be new quests for us, and that's why we'll be back next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.